What's up, guys? My name is Kujuju, and welcome back to another episode of Lights and Color. This should be episode three. I hope you enjoyed the first and second episodes. What did you think about those two episodes? Let me know down in the comment section below. In today's episode, we will be talking about six must-haves in every photo studio. Let's get into today's video. So right here on my table, you can see I have different, you know, equipment arranged here on the table. The very first thing you need to have in the studio is a utility table because this is the utility table I have arranged all these gears and it's it's quite important because whenever you're shooting maybe you have a makeup artist coming on board a hairstylist coming on board you can set up this utility table so that they can place their stuff on it also you can also use it to you know mount your laptop mount or hold your camera stuff whenever it is you're shooting or tethering in the studio so a utility table is a must have in the studio so count me down this is the first thing i mentioned a utility table make sure you have a utility table in your studio it helps trust me it has helped me on all my shoots secondly i'll talk about modifiers right currently you can see i have the 55 centimeter beauty disc which i purchased recently right i haven't been using this enough i hope to be using it more often these days so i have quite a number of modifiers in the studio of all the modifiers you should have at least one seven feet um, reverse parabolic in the studio and one deep 120 centimeter parabolic in the studio and also a 120 centimeter octopus these three modifiers can help you in a long way if you want to shoot beauty if you want to shoot you know full body portraits even if you want to shoot food family portraits group pictures in the studio these are the very three important modifiers you can have but you know gas i have this gas thing and i got a lot of you know modifiers just to help me um, with the journey i am on so the beauty i use for beauty photography and the others i also use them for beauty photography but once in a while i switch them right so yeah modifiers make sure you have modifiers in the studio i would probably leave a link or two to some of the um you know some of the sites or some of the stores i buy my modifiers from at a cheap price so secondly we'll be looking at lighting systems i have different forms of lighting systems i have the ad 600 bm i have the ad 100 pro i have the godox v860 mark ii and these lights come in come with different qualities right um, when we concern ourselves with light and color we are always looking at the quality of lights right and the quality of lights i will suggest you buy anything from the ad 300s above because first off they have a very great white balance system i think with the kelvin of 5600 you don't get to see different tint shades when it comes to using the bare ball but when you use it with a modifier that's not helpful of course you're going to have those you know temperature changes i have a problem with the ad 100 using it barely without any modifier because the tint coming from this i'm not so sure i didn't check i was like okay fine let me just buy it and use it and see it's portable of course it's really portable you can use it anywhere you can just pack this up in your bag and move it around and it's also good for a photo studio having three of these right in any studio you have it's good you can use them in these two you know strip boxes as your backlight then have the ad 600 as your key lights but if you have the fans you can buy three of the ad 600 one for your key light and two for your backlight because the quality of lights coming from this it's an affordable quality of lights right but we have better ones like the ellen crowns the brown colors and so forth and so on speed lights right unfortunately i don't have my va60 here this is one of the speed lights i used to use it uses four or eight batteries right and it worked well for me when i started using this having this in the studio should be a backup if you don't have say the ad100 or the ad600 so that means you'll be shooting wide open in the studio right but if you have enough fans and you can afford these this should be just a backup in your bag when you head out to shoot you know some pictures for events and all that so yeah you should have lights you should have lights in the studio so the third thing i want to talk about is having holders and stands in the studio i have quite a number of stands you can even see the c stand 
one must have like it's very important to have this in the studio assistant very key because it's durable it's a heavy duty stand and you can use it to hold any lights at all the ad600 is quite heavy imagine having an ad600 and let's say a 120d parabolic a one um, a 180 seven feet reverse umbrella it's quite heavy and you can't you know hold that with a normal um a heavy duty light stand also as you can see you can use this boom arm to you know boom the light i think i'm booming my key light right now which is hitting me directly for you guys to see me so have a c-stand it doesn't cost that much to own a c-stand roughly 800 ghana cities if i'm right am i Right, it doesn't cost much to have a C stand. Just get, if for anything, you can have just one C stand and maybe three or four um, heavy duty light stands in the studio. When it comes to holders, I have the Goddess Type 2 S brackets to hold my Godox AD100 lights. Even if you have the V1 um, flash or V1 speed lights, you can use the Godox S2 Type 2 S brackets reason why i am telling you guys to get this is you can remove this and have this rounded system over here and if you want it back you can just put it back and put these kind of flashes also in here it can hold even the godox ad200 the 200 pros and anything lower than the godox ad200 so try and get yourself an s2 bracket like i said it's a holder also i have this reflector holder it's from newer it helps a lot you can use this to hold flags hold reflectors you can even use this um you can you know take this off the top off and mount maybe a camera system on and when you put that on let's say a c stand you can use it to boom and hold the camera this way it's rotatable and that's one thing i like about this particular um i got from new york i have two of these i hope to get more just so that you know i like using flags a lot i like using big flags not small flags i'm hoping to use small flags but this will help to hold your reflector in the studio next thing to talk about are reflectors i own this newer reflector this is not a video sponsored by newer that is a five in one reflector getting a reflector in the studio is quite important because let's say you don't have a flag and you need something to bounce back light onto the subject you're shooting a reflector with this is a 110 centimeter reflector i will also advise you get the 150 the very long one the six feet or seven feet reflector also comes in five in one and i have flags i have different flags i have black flags for you know blocking lights as you can see this is i can use this to even block the light here right let me see here it's blocking the lights from the left side of this um, strip box right it absorbs lights you can have two or three of these in the studio you can also have two white ones and two black ones depending on how much you can afford it this doesn't cost much i think i got this for 23 ghana cities at acrylics yeah not that expensive but it didn't come in this color it came you know in just the normal color i think it was brown and i painted this to black so i have two of these in black and i have two in white so owning owning a flag and a reflector in the studio is quite important if you've seen in many of my videos i also have um styrofoams which i have modified to be flat i have one long one which i have painted the other side black just to you know absorb light of course and the other side white to bounce back light and I have two short ones for when I'm shooting close-up portraits and I don't want that huge thing in the studio space. So yeah, I have them somewhere around here. I hope I could show them. I know. Right, so owning flags in the studio is quite also an important uh, um, you know, equipment to have when it comes to the must-haves in the studio. All right, let's talk about the last but not the least, backdrops. Owning backdrops in the studio is very key. I know... Uh, having a home studio you can use your white wall you can use any material but owning a backdrop sends you to another professional level right um as you can see behind me i have the gray seamless backdrop which i'm using for this video i'm trying to you know be versatile when it comes to the kind of backdrops i use in the studio you know this is not my regular setup but i just wanted to you know 
let you see this. So, on seamless backdrops, this I got from Shikakope, and I have canvas backdrops which I always get from Pixel Junkies. I'm just going to leave a link down to wherever I get my backdrops from. Visit the website, try and get yourself a canvas backdrop. It's a must have. Canvas backdrops is a must have. It's the new ish when it comes to backdrops. So have that, own that, and whenever you're taking professional portrait photos of maybe high dignitaries, you can use that. And also when you need seamless backdrops, like the one behind me, you can visit GoPixel or Shikakope. They didn't sponsor this video. I'm just trying to be grateful. I'll leave a link down in the description. Make sure you check those sites out if you want to buy any of the backdrops I mentioned in the video. Bonus tips, you should have these simple things in the studio. I have this cutter I got from acrylics, right? It's, I think it's for the visual artist, but can also work in the studio. I use this to you know to cut out. Maybe when I get myself a a, a foam core and I want to you know create gobos, so I use the cutter to cut out shapes on the foam core to create a gobo. One last thing before I leave, make sure you don't have any annoying color as the color of your studio. In my studio, I have two shades of colors. I have to my left a white you know painted wall to my right i have a green painted wall well the green is for a particular reason as time goes on we'll change this or probably we'll change the whole color in the studio space but make sure you don't have any color that's going to affect your light whenever it is you're shooting because when let's say you're shooting one light in the studio whenever you look into the shadows or when you're trying to pull up information in the shadows the color in the room it's what you're going to see as the tint in the shadows and it's not really helpful for somebody who likes to color a lot right so make sure you don't have any annoying colors like orange yellow any color that you don't want to see in your image just don't have it as um, the color painted in your studio so i hope you enjoyed all these must-haves in the studio make sure even if you don't have all you can have a few of them but to be exact make sure you have a c stand a modifier and a quality like us thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it leave a thumbs up if you did make sure you subscribe before you leave and i'll see you in another episode of light and color peace